Time now for the first look of your evening news here on KCIM. This is Abby Ward reporting. The Glidden Fire Department invites everyone to their annual soup supper at the Glidden Fire Station this weekend. Various soups and sandwiches will be served tomorrow from 4 to 7 p.m., all for a free will donation. Proceeds from the event will help the volunteer department with necessary yearly expenses and equipment updates. Again, the Glidden Fire Department Soup Supper will be held tomorrow evening from 4 to 7 p.m. The Lakeview Blackhawks Men's Club apologizes for canceling this year's Arctic Open, but feels this is the safest option due to the conditions of the ice. The group says that while the ice is thick enough, the only way to get on and off the frozen lake has had ice breaking off. Instead of the full Arctic Open, the Lakeview Blackhawk Men's Club will be holding a mini golf course set up at 30 acres boat ramp along with a life-size pong and a keg toss on the lake. Activities will be taking place throughout the afternoon on Saturday. Following the activities, there will be a free will donation chili supper at Laney's Corral at around 6 p.m. Again, join the Lakeview Blackhawk Men's Club for miniature golf and other fun games and the Chili Supper tomorrow night in Lakeview. The Arthur N. New Airport recently received an $80,000 federal grant from the U.S. Department of Transportation through its Airport Infrastructure Grant Program. This legislation is supported by Senator Chuck Grassley, and the local airport will utilize this funding for the LED conversion project to replace the incandescent light bulbs and the multi-voltage system used for the lights along the runway. Airport Commission member Greg Seaman says airports around the country are making the conversion to LED lights for three main reasons. Number one, they're stopping production of the incandescent lights and fixtures. Number two, the LED lights run so much cheaper and they're so much more reliable. Thirdly, the electronics associated with LED lights are much simplified so that instead of running some lights at 110 volts, some lights at 220 volts, and some lights even at 440 volts, everything can be run on 110 volt electrical lines. The project costs $1,204,347 to replace the specialized bulbs and the fixtures holding the lights. Three funding sources are available for the project, the Airport Improvement Program, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law Funds, provided by the Federal Aviation Administration, which will pay 90% of the total cost. The city of Carroll is contributing the remaining 10%. We knew it was coming because we had given what is called in FAA speak a go letter from the FAA. And what that means is go ahead with the project your grants approved, it just has to be funded by Congress. The Arthur N. New Airport is one of 20 airports across Iowa that were selected to receive portions of the more than $15 million in funding through the AIG program. Senator Joni Ernst invites constituents to join her tomorrow morning for a town hall meeting in Audubon County. Iowa's junior senator will be in Audubon at the Audubon Rec Center at 10 a.m. to speak on happenings from the nation's capital and address questions and concerns from Iowans. Saturday's town hall is expected to last about an hour and is open to the public. A Carroll County District Court judge has denied a request for restitution review from a Lake City man convicted of a double homicide in Glidden in 2014. According to court records, 62-year-old Thomas Guy Henderson submitted his motion on January 25th asking the state's order for victim restitution, totally $300,000, needs to be adjusted because the price of coffee at the Iowa State Penitentiary Commissionary has risen to $9.82, and the money provided to him by his family, 20% which is withdrawn to pay restitution, is no longer sufficient. Henderson was found guilty in 2015 for the May 2014 murders of 48-year-old Tammy DeVore and her son, 30-year-old Carl DeVore, at their trailer in Glidden. 
In the review denial, the court notes Henderson has not shown any financial hardship justifying a restitution deduction and did not adequately pursue other available administrative remedies before a review would be applicable. And that has been a look at the first half of your evening news here on KCIM. We will be back for more after these messages. It's 2024 and the remaining 2023 F-150s at Champion Ford need to go. Get 1.9% financing on our new 2023 F-150. You heard that right. 1.9%. And that's not just a short-term loan. That's 72 months. And get up to $6,000 off. Are you kidding me? I kid you not. 1.9% for 72 months and up to $6,000 off. Now that's a hot deal. Get a new truck, low interest, and free oil changes for life. Only at Carroll's Ford Dealer and Champion Ford, where everybody wins. It's a new year, and oftentimes individuals will set resolutions to make changes to their health. I'm Sasha Bloyer. And I'm Krista Hewton, registered dietitians at St. Anthony Regional Hospital. Use these tips to help set achievable goals and get your new year started off right. Plan ahead by doing some meal prep on your days off. This may help limit overeating and spur-of-the-moment choices. Eat regularly and try not to skip meals. Aim for a variety of foods and incorporate a lot of color, especially from fruits and vegetables. Be mindful when eating. Avoid distractions. Remember to be present in the moment. Try using a smaller plate. This can help limit your portion sizes. And finally, get yourself moving. Look for those little ways to increase your daily activity. Even 10 minutes a day adds up. It's easy to get thrown off track when working towards positive lifestyle changes. But remember that each day is another opportunity for you to make strides and improve your overall health. Small changes now can equal big results later. For more information on how we can help you achieve your health goals, contact the St. Anthony Chronic Care Center at 712-794-5901. Always look to the cross. Always St. Anthony. Time now for the second half of your evening news here on KCIM. This is Abby Ward reporting. But before we get into any of those stories, let's take a look at a quick weather forecast with some weather facts. So tonight we're looking at areas of fog, otherwise it's going to be mostly cloudy skies with a low around 35, breezy, with wind gusts as high as 23 miles per hour. Saturday is going to be patchy fog before 11 a.m., otherwise mostly cloudy skies with a high near 46, breezy again, with gusts as high as 25 miles per hour. Saturday night, mostly cloudy with a low around 31, wind gusts as high as 21 miles per hour. And Sunday, those winds are going to die down, and we're going to have mostly cloudy skies with a low or near, with a high near 47. And Sunday night's going to be mostly cloudy with a low around 27. Yesterday's high was 54 degrees set sometime in the afternoon, and yesterday's low was at 34 degrees set at 7:45 a.m. Sunrise tomorrow is going to be at 7:31 a.m. And back in 1992, record high was set at 64 degrees, while 1905 has the lowest record temperature with negative 33. I am so glad we are far away from that. Now, let's take a look at your evening news. The Carroll City Council met for its first fiscal year 2025 budget work session on Monday. The council will convey at 5.15 p.m. at Carroll City Hall to review and discuss what city staff have prepared for the upcoming budget so far. Officials anticipate estimated expenditures include transfers of just over $30 million in fiscal year 2025. The proposed tax levy for fiscal year 25 is expected to decrease slightly from 12.16844 per $1,000 of taxable assessed valuation to 12.16046. Monday's work session is open to the public and will be live streamed via the City of Carroll YouTube channel. Links to the agenda, video, and the entire 298-page preliminary budget are included with this story on our website. The Carroll County Board of Supervisors may have found at least a little relief in what is expected to be a tight budget year thanks to the 2023 state law that limits counties and cities' annual growth. House File 718 forces counties to reduce their anticipated revenues if total property assessments rise too quickly. In Carroll County's case, urban and rural assessments grew by a combined 3.5%, but the law requires the county to cut that growth by 2%, tightening potential tax revenues. The county supervisors are still working through the budget process, but they did receive some good news during their January 29th meeting. 
The county typically budgets around $60,000 in revenue from interest gains and county investments, but County Treasurer Lisa Wagner and County Auditor Courtney Pyre reported those avenues increased to around $200,000 in fiscal year 24. The supervisors noted that unexpected funds will not make up for all of the changes forced by HF-718, but will give them some breathing room as they finalize the fiscal year 2025 budget. And that has been a look at your evening news here on KCIM. This has been Abby Ward reporting. Have a great evening.